are you? Welcome back to Mary Let's Talk. What's going on? I'm going to have part two of advice to young people, of speaking to our children, letting them know the truth. Part two of this is going to be Proverbs 4, 20. And I'm reading from the contemporary. I have a contemporary and then I have the NIV, okay? So 420 says, my child, listen carefully to everything that I say. Don't forget a single word, but think about it all the time. Knowing these teachings will mean true life. Knowing these teachings will mean true life, meaning knowing Proverbs 4 will mean true life to you on earth. Carefully guard your thoughts because they are the source of true life. Hmm. Never tell lies or be deceitful in what you say. How many of us tell our children not to lie? And then at the end of the day, we are the one lying. Don't lie. Lie is no good. Yeah? But then you're the one lying. Never tell lies or be deceitful in what you say. Keep looking straight ahead without turning aside. Know where you are headed and you will stay on solid ground. Don't make a mistake by turning to the right or to the left. Don't make a mistake by turning to the right or to the left. Now I'm going to read the NIV version. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life, your heart. Keep your heart with all diligence, because out of your heart, Springs the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth. Stop lying. Don't lie. Because when they start lying at young age, then what you think they're going to do when they grow up? If they lie and they get away with it, then when they grow up, they're going to think, let me lie again. This is pretty good. This is cool. Yeah, but when you tell them when they know at a young age that they are not supposed to lie. I have um, a girlfriend of mine, one of the sisters in the married guest talk room. And I was at her house, I think a couple of months ago. And her kids, my God, they love the word, they love God and they fear God. There was a time she was telling me that um, she had told one of them not to do something and then she came home and she saw that that thing was done and she wanted to know who did it and none of them would say anything. And then she was like, you know, the Holy Spirit saw you and the older one started crying like, Shade, you need to say something. I don't want you to go to hell. You need to say something. You got to put that fear in their heart. When they don't fear God at a young age, it does not matter. It does not matter where they go at an older age. It wouldn't mean nothing anymore. Unless they truly become born again and give their life to Christ. But if you teach them now, that's what the words say. Teach your children the way to go. When they grow older, they will not depart from it. Because that's what you've taught them. So what are you teaching your children? What are you teaching them? Take a shower. Eat three times a day. Brush your teeth. That's not going to save them. It's the word that's 
built in them, the word that you have put in them, that is that foundation that when they get anywhere, anywhere, and anything is going on and they call you and you're busy or you're at work or you're with another child or you're somewhere, they know to get on their knees and call on God. Let me finish. It says, put away from you a deceitful mouth and put preserved lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Get out of evil. What is evil? For our children, they're playing games all the time. Always on the phone. And you feel because they're not bothering you. That's okay. Let them go sit down. As long as they're not bothering me. While the enemy starts to penetrate all type of things into your children. They play games so much that they can't even focus. When it comes to reading, they can't read. Because the action, it got to be action. It got to be something that they, it has to be action. They're playing game. This is the generation that we have going on now. We have to do something. Mothers, if you don't know, now you know. That's why I'm doing this because I figured the common sense wasn't common. We say that a lot of times. But yes, we know that it's not common, but nobody's doing anything. Everybody's still doing what they know to do. That's common. Common sense is not common. Not everybody knows to pick up the Bible and read. Not everybody even have a Bible. Do you know that? A lot of your friends don't even have a Bible. How about this Christmas? You buy your girlfriend a gift. There's going to be a blessing to her. There's going to be a blessing to her children. There's going to be a blessing to... Investing in her is investing in the future of our children. Because then she'll be able to take this book and then she'll be able to read it to her kids. But better yet, why don't you take a sticky or get the, um, get the um, tabs for each um, chapter? You know how they have Psalms and Proverbs or... You will write, you can get a sticky note and write some of your favorite um, verses and put it and put that sticky note in her Bible and give it to her. Maybe she'll be able to start reading those first if she's not a Bible reader already. So this is saying in a nutshell that we need to guide our path. We need to guard our bodies and we need to guard where we are. As a leader, let me, let me bring it back a little bit as a leader. Let me bring it back. You being the mom, you're the leader. leader. You're the leader. You being the mom to teach It says they are guide. God's principles give us three crucial tools. God's principle. Chapter four is God's principles. They give us mothers, fathers, guardians. Three crucial tools that God wants us to know. It says they are guide. They help us stay on the right path. Chapter four, Proverbs chapter four will help you stay on the right path. Number two, they are guard. They keep our hearts and our bodies protected. If you listen to it, you know, you got a couple of friends and they're doing this and they're doing that. So you think it's cool. You two do it. Stupid. They're supposed to be looking at you and thinking, there's something different about that woman. There's something different about that dude. I got to find out. I want to be like that. But instead of you pulling them God's way, they're pulling you the other way. Now, the third thing is they are a gorge, meaning 
they enable us to evaluate where we are. The, the chapter four in Proverbs, what it does is that, you know, it builds our character. It builds our character. It directs our decisions. It's telling me, son, daughter, focus. Don't talk so much. Don't let everybody know what's in your heart. Don't let everybody know your business. Focus on God. Focus on wisdom. Focus on understanding. Don't lie. Don't be deceitful. So when you're looking at Proverbs 4, look at your life. Where are you in, in this Proverbs 4? Where are you? Are you are you basically guarding your body? Are you are you guarding your heart from the mischiefs of the world? Are you? Is it guiding you? Are you being led? Is your walk being led by Proverbs? And are you evaluating your life by promise? I love you all. Stay blessed. And I hope that today's um, conversation has um, been a blessing to you. Because it's truly been a blessing to me. Because it makes no sense to read the Bible if you're not going to follow what it says. It's like having, having instructions or manual to set something up. And you still choose to set it up your way. And at the end of the day, it still don't work until you read the manual. So we've been setting it up our way for a long time. But it's not going to work properly to the fullest extent until you follow the manual, which is the Bible. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Take care. Bye.